What's going on guys, Vanax here, welcome back to the channel. I wasn't sure how to title this because basically V Rising is having their 1.0 content update. It is coming pretty soon. They actually gave us the date, which is gonna be May 8th. And if you are a PlayStation fan, it's coming to PlayStation 5 as well, just on a later date. But they've also revealed there's gonna be some new endgame zones, some new endgame activities, as well as clan-wide progression to work towards the common goal. Now, we don't know exactly what that is, but they do go into some detail in their latest devlog. And this is actually super important, guys. If you're somewhat interested in V Rising, this is good information. First up, they talk about spell variety and order. V Rising is altering the way progression works. Instead of always killing the same bosses in the same order for the same spells, the developers have decided to shake things up and give us more flexibility. When you slay certain V-Bloods and drain them of their power, in addition to any recipes imparted through their blood knowledge, they give you spell points. Spell points is a brand new thing. These spell points come in various types, divided by spell school, and then further divided into three tiers. For example, defeating Clive the Firestarter now rewards the recipe for the alchemy table, minor explosive boxes, and one tier one chaos spell point. The spell book, which has now been redesigned with these changes, have new spells divided between the three tiers. Each tier represents a level of complexity rather than strength. Vampires will be introduced to more complex spells after they've gotten their feet wet, unlocking the second tier of spells fairly early in their journey into Dunley Farmlands with Vincent the Frostbringer and Krieg the Undead General. V Rising aims to strike a balance between flexibility and meaningful progression. For instance, by the time you're making your way into Act 2, where you only had access to the Merciless Charge Ultimate, you could now have access to two of the four potential ultimates, including a new one for Necromancer role players. Now, you can take a look at what this new one looks like. We're not exactly sure. It looks like it's going to be an AoE summon the dead. I'm not sure if the initial burst does damage or if it's purely just summon a bunch of enemies and try to overwhelm your foes. I'm not sure, but I am excited to test it out. Well, let's not stop there because spells and progression aren't the only things coming to V Rising. There's also a brand new station being introduced called the Altar Stygian Awakening. Here you'll tap into ancient knowledge to unlock your forgotten potential. Each spell school has a tier of passive effects that can be unlocked to provide bonuses that modify your gameplay. Some are as simple as situational boosts and effectiveness. Others provide unique opportunities like spawning blood orbs that you can pick up to recover health or summoning a skeletal warrior after you feed. As you can see, there's six per tier for a total of 18, and this is gonna add more things to grind for, unlock, and to change your playstyle overall, because unlike before, you basically had to get some of those special weapons like the legendaries and whatnot to be able to get some kind of fun little passives. But now we're getting passives for our vampire overall, which I think is gonna be a nice change. Since these passive abilities are tied to your altar, these effects can be unlocked by gathering materials from the new end game zone events and pooling together with your clan mates to unlock them one at a time in whatever order you like. This means you shall share a sort of clan-wide progression, encouraging you to work together towards a common goal that empowers you all and prepares you for the upcoming challenges of facing the greatest threats to your rise. Now they go on to say that there's a feature that they're working very hard to implement for 1.0 and they're trying to make it so that you can move your entire castle from one location to another as painless as possible. The process is actually pretty simple, they say. Place a new structure we've made that will act as the castle heart in your relocated castle in an unreserved territory, then interact with it. You can now connect that heart to a real castle heart that you have ownership of. When you do so, you get access to a new version of the build menu. Within this build menu, you have access to every individual piece placed in the connected castle and can piece together an entirely new stronghold using the parts you already own. When you confirm it, your old castle disappears and your new one solidifies and forms. Any pieces that went unused are reduced to their base materials for you to reuse as you like. Also, for those who like to decorate, wallpapers no longer cost materials to make. That just about wraps it up, guys. In conclusion, V Rising 1.0 update brings substantial improvements to the game, offering greater flexibility, customization, and collaboration. I'm super excited for this one. I've played a ton of V Rising on my channel. I look forward to playing it again when it comes out on May 8th, the 1.0 release. Hope to see you guys there. Peace.